Okay, that's better. That's better. I feel like uh, that Eddie Murphy uh, skit where uh, where he's talking, not SNL, but he, he's doing stand up and he goes, talks about his family putting gas on the fire. That's fire. Anyway, this is not nearly as funny, but you know, there's a nice fire. And you know, that's what this is about. You're out cold and you want to warm up. We need a little more rain, but it's snowing or hailing or whatever this is. And uh, I'll get uh, the temperature thingy to show you, but it's actually warmer here uh, near the fire. And that's not just to be silly. It's just saying that there's something about uh, having a canopy above. It kind of keeps like a, like a, a, a bubble of warmth. Um, <clears throat> and it's quite nice. It's quite nice. And I don't think it's just accounted for by the, uh, the infrared radiation of the, uh, of the wood. Cause I just started this fire. There's not much, not much embers going on yet. So anyway, so this is what it's all about. It's very nice here. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's breezy obviously or windy, but it's not bad. I just, my ears are a little unprotected, but, uh, I think when the fire heats up, it'll be good. Oh, and just a note, editorial note, you'll see how the pole is right next to the fire. Uh, you know, this is like eight inches or something, you know, and that's not, see how it licks the steel. It's, it's not a risk. I mean, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. I actually built one of these and the whole, the whole vertical post was steel heavy. And, uh, if you could stick it in the fire, it would just start to get, after like a couple hours of fire, it would actually start to get hot up there. Uh, and, uh, you know, too hot on the pole. I think with maybe some, you know, there's some MIT scientists out there who could help me build a heat sink up the pole, you know, so you could, you could put the lower, lower base, base of the pole in the fire and still get rid of some of that heat so it doesn't travel all the way up. Um, anyway, so we put a cooling system in or something, which would be kind of cool, but this works good enough. Uh, and as you can see, there's plenty of room around, around the fire pit here. Um, I think I'm going to put more wood in because, you know, I can. <laughs> I don't know. This is, this, is, this is really nice, man. I have inventor's pride, but also this is like, it's pretty sweet, yo. And uh, it's the wind has subsided a bit. I think it's because that big air can that big gust of uh, moisture came in. And it's blowing up the other side over here. You can see right there, it's blown up there. But... Uh, Anyway, so, ah, dude, I came all the way up here and I was like, you know, Sunday afternoon, I could be doing, you know, something really boring and comfortable. And I was a little worried there setting it up. It was quite flappy and dramatic. And I, I, uh, I live in a little bit of fear of my own, uh, adventurism because sometimes let's face it, I do some dumb, <laughs> some dumb shtick. Uh, but this one's working out. This one's working out nice. And, uh. Uh, anyway, I'll, I will glow in the bas bas I will bask in the glow of the campfire and my own uh, fatherly pride. Okay, take care. Okay, I got the fire boosted, but I wanted to show you about uh, just just the geometry of it. Uh, here's the big old fire. Now that is a big fire. So you know, standing here right next to it is a little too hot. So you'd want to comfortably stand like or sit. Like right here and that's like that's like four feet four feet so uh just a safety concern okay so i got my infrared thermometer here all right so i'm shooting oh the ground is like 60 so it's obviously been heated by the fire but you see how it, it doesn't really go up very tall like this is kind of like the basic if your flames are going if your flames are going above this you know you're, you're being dumb about the canopy but so the ambient temperature is like 34 or something yeah, 35. Okay, so up here on the canopy is 62. It's 62 up there with a big fire like that. Of course, this is going to be mega hot, um, you know, really hot. And the pole is like, I don't know, let's see what it is. Uh, let's see, 100 degrees right there. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> for the uninitiated, um, you have to have a stupid fire in order to have any risk up there, uh, things getting too hot, things melting, etc. Uh, <clears throat> and I haven't even done uh, testing. I guess I could take a, um, a section of this and just heat it to 
uh, to melting point. I think it's 400 degrees, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, in which case, you know, you're melting, you know, the fire is going to be so hot you wouldn't be next to it. So, you know, this requires some, some smarts and common sense, but uh, you have a big old fire here with no risk to the canopy whatsoever. Uh, now it's cold, it's a cold day today, but uh, if you were to do this in, um, in moderate temperatures, like, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, the, same, the same common sense applies, just the numbers will be different. It might get up to uh, 100 or so up there. Uh, I've tested it before, um, even 120 up there. It's, it's possible, but um, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Uh, negative. So anyway, there's a comment about the size of the fire and temperatures and, you know, safety concerns. Because uh, one of the other concerns that people ask me is like, is this uh, fire resistant material? And the answer is no. Uh, the fire resistant material has some special coating that's proprietary. And in my mind, you know, way overpriced. And so I built this with this uh, large uh, spaces so that one, you could have the sense of cavernous living or big living, but also that you have a degree of safety that you wouldn't have otherwise uh, with a poly tarp or, um, you know, any of the other uh, lightweight tarp materials. I d I've done lightweight nylon and I've done poly tarp, obviously, and a lighter version of this. Uh, this is uh, WeatherMax 80, as I've said before, <laughs> which is a polyester blend, and it works just, just fab. Um, and this is, this is the one that'll stick. I, I thought about doing canvas, but canvas will, uh, you know, when the wind shakes it, the canvas will uh, have water droplets come through it. And it's really heavy, you know. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to my uh, watching the drama unfold here in the, in the clouds as we are. Oh, oh, is that rain? I hear rain, is that snow? I think it's snow. Can you, can you hear it? <laughs> oh, oh, drama. Oh man, it is racing up the hill. Can you see that? Look at that. It is just like running up the hill. That is awesome. <laughs> nice. Nice, Mother Nature, you're giving us a little entertainment. All right, take care. I don't know if you can hear it, but the, the snow is hitting the canopy. Let's see if you can pick it up. dry in here. Well, mostly warm. Can you hear it? It's too bad we can't get rain, but oh well. It works good for light snow too. All right, see ya. Okay, I'm recording. I forgot to bring the straps, I, I was I was doing a modification. <laughs> and you know, you, you remember these things. It's like, oh, it's at home, in the drawer, in the garage. So the straps here, see this one here, that are supposed to connect the smoke ring to the mast, right? I forgot them. But as fate would have it, or just, you know, building things extra long, uh, the chimney, or the, excuse me, the straps that you use to connect it, uh, the, the metal ring to the canopy, those are actually long enough to reach the chain. And you can see them here. Uh, so it's a nice little backup. And, uh, you know, could you plan for this stuff? No. <laughs> like, uh, but, uh, you know, here it is. And this is reality testing, you know, like... Like, uh, I would have been foobar. I would have had to use cargo straps or something uh, to gerrymander, not gerrymander, jerry-rig the connection between the two. Uh, I had a, a, some extra strap I was going to cut, but I was like, hey, these are long enough. And lo and behold, it worked. So there you go. That's what real-world testing is for, is finding this crap out before, you know, someone else gets lost in these details. And... Um, Anyway, it's reassuring because 
you know, I try to build stuff with extra options built in because you, you can you can engineer stuff and I'm not an engineer, but you can build stuff. So it's so precise that it really only has one purpose and that purpose only. And when I built this, I tried to as many options as possible uh, for stuff like when this happens. And and when I made the straps extra long to connect the smoke ring to the, to the uh, canopy, of course I wasn't thinking about, you know, if I ever forget my straps. But the fact that they're long was a, a reflection of the, the philosophy, like, you know, if you can, you know, do it. And, uh, you know, give yourself options. And, uh, you know, it worked out. Um, but if it hadn't worked out, you know, you could have worked with uh, straps uh, that you cut from something else, uh, extra ratchet straps, rope, you know, anything like that. So, um, at observations, notes from the field, and um, actually, I shouldn't say it sounds diminutive. It means, well, here's the pearls that really matter because it's cold and windy, and I'm just out here by myself. I need to have options, and. Um, Sometimes you don't always think of them, and sometimes the options you think, you know, aren't there, like forgetting the straps at home and uh, kicking myself for, for doing that. But I didn't kick my, you know, I, I try not to punish myself that way because I've learned that the way I is is the way I is, both good, bad, and different. And um, here we go. Here's a case example of something working out for the better. Um, and somewhat embarrassingly, I should have, how could I forget? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so as the fire's starting to get really nice, you can feel the coals starting to boost out the heat. This is this is very tasty. Um, I didn't bring anything to cook over the fire. <laughs> I'll have a cold sandwich and a cold beer next to my hot fire. <laughs> anyway, but the the view you can't beat. You just can't beat it. I mean, you could you could you could try and beat it, but you just can't. I mean, you know, come on, people. This is what it's all about. All right. Well, notes from the edge. See ya. Ooh, it's coming in. Check it out. We got snow. It's actually, it's actually baby hail. It's what it is. It's little, little frozen particles. And uh, it's a little dramatic. There we are. <laughs> this is trippy. And I think it's like 80 degrees down in the valley or 60 or whatever, 70, whatever it is. Anyway, so here we are. Uh, it's still windy. <laughs> it's not quite wet, but when the stuff melts on you, you, you become wet. So, I don't know what to say. We kind of got the trifecta of death, you know, the wind, cold, the rain. Ah, but here we are. Ha ha ha. Now, it's not, it's not like a living room warm, but it's certainly warmer than outside. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. And uh, I just put the truck in there just so I could, just. Oh, we're packing up. We're packing up. Oh my. Got everything in the truck. <laughs> I think Mother Nature said, time to go. <laughs> it got much windier and colder, which was expected, but anyway. We love the Tundra, we love four wheel drive. Check that out. <laughs> ah. We'll go right up it though, so. All right, next time. <laughs>